everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the things that you should set up before you start your new Adobe Captivate 8 project. So right off the bat, I'm just going to jump right in here. Um, quite frankly, this is like such an important thing that so many people skip over because it, I think it really improves your workflow and and how much time you get to spend adjusting objects and changing settings and things like that. So before I even uh, open my project or create a new project, the very first thing that I like to do with a clean install of Adobe Captivate 8 is go in and set up some of my global preferences. And it's important that you don't have an Adobe Captivate 8 project file open for this because that way when you go into edit and select preferences or press shift F8 and go into the preference dialog um, you, you, you are making sure that these settings that you make today are truly uh, global settings. In other words what that means is everything I set for right now is going to be for all courses, all new courses that I develop moving forward. If I had one of my projects open, the settings would only be for that particular project. So make sure you don't have any other projects running while you do this. Go into preferences. Uh, when you do so, the first thing that comes up is defaults. So we'll quickly cover off this. This is a very simple section to, to explain. Um, these are going to be the defaults of, of any new objects that, that appear, including slides. So the very first thing is slide duration. I'm okay with three seconds because for me, uh, three seconds as a default it works perfectly fine because in most cases um, I put on the majority of my slides some sort of narration, whether it's done in a recording studio or whether I use the text-to-speech that's built into Adobe Captivate which is going to force out the length of the slide anyway so I'm not too worried about changing that three seconds is fine the uh, the one slide that I typically do uh, where with no narration is the final quiz because I don't want to be in someone's ear disturbing them uh, when they're taking a quiz so those are usually silent slides and three seconds is a good length for that because they're gonna pause make the decision and move on at their own pace anyway the background color of all my defaults, you can choose this here. I'm okay with white, but if for whatever reason you want to make another selection, there's obviously um, different choices available for how you can select the color. Uh, you can even use a uh, eyedropper to select it from um, even you know from Adobe Captivate itself. So I can I like, let's say I like this background gray. I can make all my background colors that color, but. I like white myself, so we'll leave that. When you're um, when you're previewing Adobe Captivate projects, uh, one of the default ways you can preview is the next X number of slides. In this case, the default is five, but you can change that to any number you wish. Um, it could be three slides that's appropriate for you, or maybe you want to see more of your course. You could change the number to ten or fifteen. Um, five is fine for me, so I'm going to leave that where it is there. There is, um, yeah, of course here as you can see if the rollover gives you a little hint here, you can choose anything from 2 right up until 50. Next we have our object defaults and I won't go through all of these but this allows you to set the defaults for all of these different types of objects. So text captions, rollover captions, highlight box, rollover slidelets. I don't use a lot of these so I might only set up my adjusted defaults for text captions. I use them from time to time. The Probably the biggest number one thing that I set up is a smart shape. So let's bring that up. That's probably the most important thing. Um, so a smart shape. Three seconds isn't really what I usually do. Sometimes my, my smart shapes are only on screen for a short period of time. But I'm going to actually make this default rest of slide. And the other one that I use quite a bit is images. So I put in a lot of images into my courses. And again, more often than not, I prefer rest of slide. And I'm going to leave no transition because that's something I choose depending on what I'm doing at that particular point in my project. Um, so that's good for me. 
You can have Adobe Captivate auto size your buttons and auto size captions. This would be useful if you want the course, uh, or in this case, those two types of objects to be resized according to the content that's within them. So, for example, if I copy and paste a sentence into a caption box, obviously I need the caption box to be resized according to the, the amount of text. So, uh, you can check these off, that's useful. Um, I prefer to resize my buttons so that they, they all match one another and things like that. So I'm going to leave that one off, but the captions I think is a good one. Uh, calculate caption timing. This is for captions that appear on, on screen for a set amount of time. Um, the reason you would want to have Adobe Captivate calculate caption timing is maybe you have an entire paragraph of material appearing in a caption. Um, but it's only on screen for five seconds. Well, that's not an appropriate amount of time for a typical person to read all that information. So you may want to have Adobe Captivate calculate this for you. So if you do, check that guy off there. Here is a really neat, cool uh, new feature for Adobe Captivate 8. Use Smart Shapes for SFH. SFH stands for Success Failure Hint Captions instead of Text Captions. I absolutely love this option, so I'm going to make sure I check that off. The text captions that are available for your quiz questions in Adobe Captivate 7, 6, 5, and all the previous versions, somewhat limited. You could choose from some of the defaults that are in there, but you know, let's say you're working for a company whose branding you know, insists on certain colors and specific uh, fonts and sizes and things like that. Uh, it's so much easier to work with uh, smart shapes because, of course, you can change those in any number of different ways. The built-in captions, somewhat limited, so uh, I recommend you check that off. Let's go up to general settings and take a look at some of those options real quick for you as well. So. These, uh, again, continuing with the concept of global preferences, we are setting these up for all future new courses that we create in Adobe Captivate 8. Uh, let's say I'm starting off with a screen resolution on a course that's 800 by 600, but I'm importing uh, a slide from maybe an older course or another course that's a different resolution. I want to make sure that that rescales to my project that I'm actually working on. So th this is something you definitely want to check off if that's the case. Uh, I also recommend that everyone always generate project backup files because project backup files, of course, will allow you to save your project in the event that your main original becomes damaged. The project backup file gets saved in the same folder as your, as your course that you're saving, and it's a, the last time it was saved prior to the current um, the current save. So if something gets messed up because of you run out of memory or your computer is chugging along too slow and it damages the file, you can always recover from that backup file. Uh, this option here is for languages where readers read from right to left. As you know, if you're an English speaking person or Spanish or French, that you know typically those types of languages we read from left to right, so if you need to enable the right to left composer, check this checkbox off here. The other option that I like to check off as well on this page is enable custom workspaces slash panel undocking. We'll need to restart Captivate for this to take effect, but in essence what this allows you to do is to pull off the different panels like the property panels and have those float freely but also be able to customize the layout so I like to have my align and um, uh, my alignment toolbar up on the screen so that requires of course a custom workspace so uh, that's something I check off as well there are some default locations that you can set up this one simply is where your course will be published and this one is where your Adobe Captivate um, software will save temporary files. This is called a cache. A cache is simply where things get stored on your hard drive uh, for temporary purposes. You can change the location of these by clicking the browse and selecting a different location. 
Um, and of course you can clear the cache anytime you find that you know you're using up too much hard drive space with temporary files. Um, I've not used this option so much but from what I understand there is the ability to store comments between uh, users um, who are working together on an Adobe Captivate project and of course you would want to be able to select that folder as well and that's what this option is for. I'm kind of a freeform guy. I put my objects uh, where I where I need them, where I want them. Um, but if you're more of a snap to grid kind of person, in other, in other words, you want the uh, the alignment to sort of happen automatically for your various objects that you're placing on screen, uh, you may need to set your grid size to be either larger or smaller. The default is 16. You could double that. You could, you know, half that. Whatever the case may be. Um, I usually don't touch this number at all. And here's where you have some spelling preferences. Um, when you're working for a company and developing e-learning, uh, very often there are certain rules that, uh, you know, you don't need the spell check to go over, um, you know, acronyms that are all in uppercase, for example. So that's why this guy is checked off here. Or if they have specific products, that are use a combination of letters and numbers, uh, you can have it ignore those types of things as well. So you can set this up to to really um, streamline your your spell checks for you. The uh, the last uh, item here is the confirmation messages, and this also will affect your workflow as well. So if you're working along in Adobe Captivate, there's any number of things that Adobe Captivate is basically going to do a confirmation message for you. Like for example, if you're deleting a slide, before it actually lets you delete that slide, it asks you, are you sure you want to delete this slide? And that's where this is driven from. If you were to uncheck all of these things, this would really speed up your workflow. But you run the risk of making mistakes and deleting things that might be important to you. So you need to kind of um, use your best judgment here. Um, I prefer to, you know, for example, I don't want it to inform me every time I delete an object because I'm cutting and pasting and dropping different objects into my course all the time. I change my mind, I delete that and put something else in its place. I don't need a confirmation message every time that happens. In fact, that would really slow me down. So this is unchecked for me. I think that's the default anyway. Um, but if I'm deleting an entire slide, yeah, I might want to think about that for a moment before I actually commit to that. So, you know, I go with the default on this, but uh, certain things uh, you may want to turn off. It's all your preferences, right? That's why they call this section preferences. So that's a quick tour of the system global preferences within Adobe Captivate 8, uh, the general settings and the defaults. I hope you found this uh, video useful. If you have, please subscribe to my videos and let me know that you enjoy watching my videos. And if you want, you can also give me a thumbs up for this video as well. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.